tuned for The Joan Quinn Profiles. As an editor for Andy Warhol's interview with the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, LA Style, and Detour Magazines, Joan covered the social set, the Hollywood hotshots, the international art scene, the mysteries of food, the excitement of travel, and the fabulous world of fashion. Joan continues to find creative people on the cutting edge who make things happen. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Waiting to be profiled are collector historian Milt Larson <laughs> and executive chef at On Sunset in the Lux Hotel, Olivier Roussel. Milt Larson, who was born in Pasadena, went to Los Angeles High School. And in his words, he went to the University of Hard Knocks <laughs> <laughs> before leading a life as a writer, producer, performer, radio host, songwriter, <laughs> collector, and founder of that private club, The Magic Castle. That's it. Um, did I leave anything out? I don't think so. I actually, <laughs> what that means is I'm unemployed in about 10 different occupations. Is that it? Should we start in 1963? <laughs> That's when you started uh, the castle. Magic Castle, right. It's, we just had our 45th anniversary, which is kind of cool. Why did and, you uh, start something like that? Uh, really, it was, I was born in a magic family. Uh, my father and mother <laughs> and, and brother uh, were the Larson family of magicians. And when I was uh, just a little bitty kid, uh, we went out on the road and uh, I was a cute little kid. So dad got a lot of mileage out of two cute little kids on the stage with him. Is that, mm -hmm. So did you perform magic? Uh, yeah, a couple of little things. Can you, know. you, or was that not your thing? Oh, no, I, I do an act from time to time. I do a, a comedy act where nothing much magical really happens. But, 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 uh, but, but it's fun, you know, I, <laughs> and uh, I've been the opening act for The Amazing Jonathan in Las Vegas and things. But, but I don't perform very much anymore because uh, I, I really prefer just to, uh, you know, I've got so many other things going. I mean, it, it's just kind of crazy to do that. But We're going to uh, go through mm, that, but, mm. but so what did that magic castle, what was your concept? Oh, well, what I was going to say, we were born in this magic family and we were always surrounded by magicians. My dad had a magic magazine that's still going after years and years and years. Wow. And uh, he passed away at a very early age, but uh, my brother and I were always involved with magic and we were in television, but we always had this, uh, my dad's dream of having a club for magicians. So one day I was uh, looking out the window of my office in Hollywood and admiring this old mansion that was on the hill and uh, it looked like a, something straight out of the old Charles Adams cartoons. You know, you expect to see the Adams family wandering around there. So, so uh, <laughs> just put kind of two and two together and I met the owner of the property, Tom Glover, who was a wonderful guy who believed, he was, I was about 30 years old when I started the castle. And, and uh, he believed this crazy kid that said he could make it into a magic club. And he didn't know what to do with the building at that time. Oh. So, uh, so he kind of gave me the key and said, have a good time. And uh, that's what started it and all. And you just have magic acts there all the time? Oh, yeah. It? Well, now it's, it's huge. I mean, it's uh, uh, the old mansion is, uh, we always joke about it. We say it's uh, bigger on the inside than it is on the outside, <laughs> you know, because it kind of is annexes and it goes back in the hills and the basements and the things. So, it's 22,000 square feet. Wow. Of it, are there other magic mm -hmm. castles around? The, are the, is it a no, franchise? No, we are it. You are and, the only uh, one. You didn't. And, uh, why didn't you decide to go someplace else and open Well, them? it was always a kind of just a family operation, mm. and it's a private club for magicians. And uh, a lot of magicians on the uh, Los Angeles, uh, uh, Southern California area, and uh, they kind of gravitate to the castle. We have 4,000 members. So they're all, there's a lot of camaraderie. Oh, yeah. Do they uh, share they, secrets? And always. They uh, do. Yeah, except with people that aren't magicians. You know, uh, they, I see, yeah. They're very secretive on that score. And it's, it's a lot of fun. We have a, a very grand restaurant and uh, bars, and we have seven magicians a night performing at the castle. Uh, three, are they all members? Are they all members? Well, they don't have to be. Oh, they but, don't have but to. But usually be. they are, and uh, they're from all over the world. And uh, uh, there are three stage magicians, and then two what we call parlor. That's a kind of stand up, like stand up comic, and uh, then a close up, which is really what the castle is all about. If you can do things very close and. You can't catch the magicians. You but, know. So mm -hmm. they're, you're right on top of them, oh, and yeah. you can't see our, what they're doing. Our, our big close-up theater, 
which is a beautiful little theater with upholstered chairs, and there's only 22 seats. Is so, that right? So you are oh, so never, you're right on top yeah, of them. You're never more than three chairs away from the magician. You know? And you can't see. Yeah. The, talking about that and, and mentioning the way you were uh, having the performers on there, you actually uh, promote, uh, you've promoted magic shows. You promoted it, uh, produced at the, mm -hmm. the Mayfair Mag um, Music well, Hall mm -hmm. and Variety Arts in different places, uh, and you've got something uh, at the Beverly mm -hmm. Hilton. Well, we had uh, uh, the It's Magic Show just had its, well, we had our 50th anniversary at the Kodak Theater this past year. And then uh, this year would have been our 51st, which we did. But the thing that is coming up is the uh, awards banquet. That's like the Academy Awards. And since we don't have writers, we don't have to worry about that. Yeah, but, like the, that. Uh, but the awards banquet is coming up April 5th at the Beverly Houghton Hotel. And that's bringing in magicians from all over the world who are the top award-winning magicians. And then we give them our awards. You know, and we have our, our Magician of the Year Award. and. The, and it's a great thing. So when you and then when you were producing at the Mayfair and at the Variety mm -hmm. Arts, it was all the same kind of yeah. uh, idea uh, that you were talking about. I, I was born the year vaudeville died. I've, uh, I've, I've, they they always say that vaudeville died when they closed the New York Palace. Yeah, the, uh, right. Oh, and that's when you yeah, started being a collector. So yeah, <laughs> I, I just I was enamored with the field of magic and variety and vaudeville acts and everything. So we started this beautiful little theater in Santa Monica called the Mayfair Music Hall. Oh, and that, I see. that had a good run for about 10 years. And oh, then I we see. had the Variety Arts Theater and right. Ballroom down in downtown Los Angeles. Right. And that was the Society for the Preservation of Variety Arts. People are always saying the Society for the Prevention of Variety Arts, but that's not preservation. <laughs> but talking about preservation, you collect 78s and LPs. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> it, as, well, a, as a collector, and that's part mm -hmm, of the historian mm -hmm. part of your Well, background. I do a, uh, a radio show called To Hear Them Again for the First Time. Oh, and, you do. And uh, it's on cable. As a matter of fact, it's on Time Warner uh, here in Los Angeles. But uh, the uh, entire concept of the show is that young people of today are, have been born at a time where they c could not have been around in the 20s and the 30s to hear all these wonderful old records. So I play them, and I'm, I'm probably the only one on radio playing these disgustingly old records. And uh, Richard Sherman, a, a songwriter, uh, is on my show every week talking about songwriters. It's a fun show. But yeah. when you started collecting, you started collecting 78s mm -hmm. and LPs. I mean, people yeah. don't even know what that is anymore. Oh, Do you yeah. have equipment to play that? Oh, sure. Yeah, I have actually the turntables I play the 78s on came from the old... NBC studios at Sunset and Vine. Is that right? And, uh, the, you know, the great big platters. Yes, yeah, so and we know where and, to go, uh, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, I play mainly 78s on my uh, radio show, but I've got a huge collection of LPs. And How's the sound? How's the... Thanks to digital uh, oh. computer technology today, I've run it through a, a oh. final cut uh, film editing type oh. thing, and it's amazing. You can just take all the scratches and pops out. Oh. And they sound like brand new records. So are you re really particular about what you buy? Or will you buy any 78 that comes along? Well, or when I, are there any left? No, when I was a kid, and I'm talking about a teenage kid, uh, I fell in love with these collection things. I, I, I was stage manager at L.A. High School uh, in a, a play called Pygmalion. And they needed a gramophone, one of those old horn uh -huh. jobbers. And nobody had one, so I went to the junk store and got a gramophone for 25 bucks and um, it had some records and I put the records on a gramophone and from that time on I was hooked. So you have to remember that when I was in, a, in high school <coughs> the um, those records weren't that old. You know? No, no, when you were collecting, oh so <laughs> no. you started keeping so getting I, them I started around. collecting when I was I young see, and the records were, were old but they weren't <laughs> right. that old you know so yeah. now I, I play a record that's a hundred years old. Well I'm not a hundred years People always kid about the Magic Castle because the castle will have its 100th birthday oh, right. uh, you start. <laughs> in, uh, next year in yeah. 1999. I mean, I'm the building, the old mansion. Oh, the building. And so uh, people will say, well, I want you to meet Mel Larson. He built the Magic Castle. Oh, right. Well, they mean I founded the Magic right. Castle Club. <laughs> and I always correct him. I said, I didn't build the building 100 years ago. I'm it's sorry. 50 I'm, years I'm older than I'm me. I'm old, but I'm not that old. <laughs> you it. mentioned Richard Sherman, who's an oh, Oscar yeah. winner mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, nominee, yeah. eight mm -hmm. times nominated for he his songs. A, and you write yeah. with him. Yeah, we have a, a new musical. It's called Pizzazz. And it, it takes place at the turn of the last century, uh, gay 90s. 
And it's all about a comedian team, uh, Weber and Fields, and Lillian Russell, and Diamond oh, Jim yes. Brady. And Richard and I have written the, the lyric, music and lyrics, and uh, we're producing it in uh, June in Santa Barbara at the new $70 million uh, Granada Theater up there, which would be the first musical in that new theater. And mm. did it already play at the University of Texas? We, yeah, we had a run-through run through. of it, and uh, it was marvelous because they, they wanted a project. This was uh, two years ago. And we had done the show, but we really wanted to see what it looked like. So they did a full production with a complete orchestra, the whole did thing. Did you feel yeah. intimidated with no university degree going there and having this oh, big no, thing? Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I just never got around to going to college. They, uh, I, by the time I was in my last year of high school, we were already publishing a couple of joke books. So there you And were. I went directly into radio and uh, then television as a writer. T and, truth uh, and Consequences, yeah. you mm -hmm. did for what, 18 years? 18 years on Truth and Consequences, having a lot of fun, and that was a great job. But, uh, and also, when we were at the Variety Arts, uh, we did a number of shows with USC. Oh, right. Uh, uh, the uh, 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 seminars school. and things, so I'm officially on the uh, USC Alumni Association. So there you are. So, so that's a good place to I've, be, I've got that's a, where I am. I've got USC. a U USC <laughs> credit card with Tommy <laughs> Trojan on it, but I never went to USC. <laughs> So people say, oh, when did you go? I say, well, don't talk about that. Yeah, well, that was great that you did that. <laughs> the other thing that Richard Sherman and his brother had a uh, star yeah. on the Rock of Fame, yeah. and so yeah. did you. Uh, we, they had theirs about the time they did Mary Poppins and, and uh, you know, Chitty Chitty Bang uh -huh. and everything, and they were very thrilled. They're across the street from the Grumman's Chinese Theater. And just last year, I got a star, my brother and I, my late brother and I got a star on the boulevard directly across the street from Dick Sherman. Oh, that's and he's great. been my oldest friend for years, so we're always kidding about it. And his star, I'm kidding him because his star is in front of Hooters. Oh! And, and he was kidding me because they've just started work on the Madame Tussauds uh, Wax Museum. Oh. <laughs> which is a $50 million project. So they put a construction fence around where my star is, so my star won't be visible for another year. For another so. year. So he's kidding me about my location, and I'm kidding him about... That's, it, that's what big, happens when you guys are big jokesters and you know how to write very flattering. Jokes. I can't tell you, you know, yeah. you always say, well, gee whiz, uh, but, uh, you know, I've got my little star here. Oh, that's, <laughs> oh, that's why you have the star. Oh, well, congratulations. <laughs> and thank you so much for being with us well, today. Well, thank you, and uh, it's just wonderful being here. It's so nice of you to uh, mention us and keep the old publicity fire going. We love having you. Thank you. <laughs> Don't go away. We're going to be right back with Chef Olivier Roussel. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Executive chef Olivier Roussel comes from Paris, where at the age of 16, he began his formal culinary studies. His family ties are rooted in Bordeaux, and he worked under two famed chefs, Bernard and André, from that region. Mm -hmm. He uh, also worked in the Paris brasseries, that traditional brasserie where you're just running around all the time yeah. and you have to do everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He went on um, to prestigious hotel clubs in London. He worked with chefs there. He went to South Africa where he worked at a hotel and winery. And then he came to Los Angeles, Santa Monica in particular, to Michael's Restaurant. And now you're at On Sunset. Yes. But when you worked for Michael, did you ever go back to New York and work there? I, I went to New York a couple of times. Uh, I, um, uh, Michael's as a restaurant in New York, so right. we did a lot of cross training. And, and I love New York as a food city. It's <laughs> no, a, a dream <laughs> for a chef to, to go there and, uh, and experience the food and everything. So, yeah, I, 
I did. I went back uh, one, one one time. Also, we cooked at the James Beard uh, house. Oh, did you? That's yeah, great. Yeah, with Michaels, and uh, it was very good. Yeah, that's great. But what brought you to California? Why? Did, well, you left South Africa. Yes. Um, you know, as a chef, you, as a Frenchman, and as a chef, you know, you're home everywhere. There's some good food. You you just want to go where the food and the, the the good wine and and everything is. So I tend to to go into regions where uh, I can find that. Was that part of the the part of the training when you were in Bordeaux and when you were yes. in Paris? Mm -hmm. And and did you cook in your mother's kitchen? Uh, I did, I did, yeah. So many chefs always say, oh, they were always around their mother cooking, but... I was always around. In the family, there was always people cooking and uh, just that uh, that love for, for uh, good company and food and wine and... Eating. And <laughs> eating, exactly. <laughs> just, it's a nice, it brings people together and I have all those, these childhood memories and... Uh, and flavors and oh, things that I, I try to recreate. Yeah, do you smell those things in your sleep yeah, sometimes and remember? Yeah, yeah, in my sleep and in my kitchen. Yeah, uh, in your kitchen. So we try and recreate. You started at 16. Is that too too old or too young for it's, a Frenchman? It's pretty standard uh, in oh. France to start early. You, you you start after pretty much after college. The, this, the time comes to... Uh, to uh, to decide which uh, field you're going to go for, and um, it what better time than to uh, to start early, you know, so get you an early start. You started there, and then you went kind of you studied with those two chefs, Bernard and Andre. Yes, yeah, I yes. can't say their names. That's why I didn't say yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> so they they're very respected in the Toulouse re region of France and. Uh, they cook a lot with foie gras. The food is very uh. rich and very. Uh, Tell me their names. Very again. good. Andre Ramuneda. Ramuneda. Yeah, yeah. And. And. Uh, Bernard. Uh, Bernard. Uh, oh, I'm well, like just blinking right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but did when you studied with them, did you remember things from your past? Yes. Or yes, were they yes. new things to you? No, they did. I, you know, when you start in the kitchen at at such a young age, you you. Uh, you don't cook right away. You have to to really. They they teach you uh, discipline, uh, and they teach you other things before you get to cook. So oh, that's what it is. So you just follow them around and try and absorb as much information as you can. And then when you got to the brasserie, what do you do? You just uh, you, you you learn s uh, speed. You know, you learn speed, <laughs> and you learn to speed? run around fast. And <laughs> Uh, that's interesting. You learn speed because you need that, don't you? Absolutely, absolutely. Did you work as a waiter too? I did at some point. Yeah, it's part of the training, so you understand what the the front of the house versus uh. the back of the house da does. And yeah, that's. I kept thinking the speed was with the waiters, but the speed's with the chefs it's too. The chef isn't too, it? of course. When <laughs> when people are hungry, you 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 know you you can't wait around. You have to, to go and do it. When you got to London. You also trained with yeah. uh, um, people from the culinary arts school. Yes, yes. Did you go to school there? No, no. I, w I, al I had already done my education by then, and uh, I, I basically wanted to work on on, uh, on my English, and I wanted to travel already. Oh. I had a travel bug. I know. Why did you so get that so young? I don't know. I've always wanted uh, to, to go see what else is uh, is out there. and. So here you are in Good London experience. with these gr guys who are working in like s prestigious men's clubs, yeah. cooking yeah, for very. private clubs, which yes. is very kind of stodgy in a way, isn't it? Kind of uptight. No, well, it, it is, but the, uh, there you learn the, the classical cooking. Like they're very serious about the classical things. You know, it, to be able to do moder modern food, yeah. and like nouvelle cuisine, if you if you will, you you have to know the classics. You was can't it different? Just go was it different for you than what you'd already studied in Paris? Uh, it was. Uh, it was in the the lineage of. Uh, it, was it was a continuation was, of, uh, of of <laughs> that. Yeah. <laughs> so and once you have the classics, uh, uh, then you can start experimenting and trying your own. Uh, once you have the basic and the techniques. So what I wanted to do was say, in mm. some of those private clubs, Prince Charles came. Yeah, he did. Yeah. The mm. Queen Mother. What would you Queen think mother, when yeah. they were there? What I mean, we, what were you uh, doing? Obviously, everybody was very uh, honored that they would come, and also. Uh, a little bit scared, but yeah. uh, they, you know, they they uh, they eat too, just as uh, just as all of us do. So we we just did what we did best, and uh, and uh, what did they straight. eat? 
<laughs> what ah, kind of what food did they, did they eat? <laughs> Well, uh, I don't know. For example, the Prince Charles uh, really likes oysters, so we, we used oh. to have a special selection of oysters for him. Uh, the Queen's mother used to come once. Uh, you know that the, the, the female side is segre segregated oh, from it's the Oh, from because it's a men's the, club. The main floor is, uh, is for gentlemen only, and even the Queen can't, can't go is there. Is that right? Yeah, oh, so that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but she liked everything. We did specials on a daily basis, and she, she just tried everything. Uh, she, she was very nice. She always made a point of uh, going around to uh, all the staff and shaking their hands. She was, she was very appreciated with that. Uh, it's nice. It's great for you because you can hide in the kitchen. Yeah. But probably the waiters oh, were nervous. Change. Yeah, they were. They <laughs> were they very nervous. So from England, you went to South Africa yeah, to a South resort Africa. winery. Yes. And you became an executive chef there. What yeah. mm -hmm. happens there? Because it's different. You're, you're running a hotel, kind of, aren't you? Yes, yes. In a yes. way? Yes, you have. It's different from the traditional restaurant setting, but you just have to deal with different things like room service and, oh, and right. cooking, cooking for a larger number of people. Uh, as in for, for restaurants, you'll, you'll, do table, you'll work table per table, order per order. And but when you work in in a hotel, you have to sometimes do a dinner for a couple hundred people. That's uh, it takes a different kind of skills to 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 do that. But but does banquet food turn out to be just like you would be serving for a table to table? It, it could be. It can be. It yeah, can yeah, be. absolutely. If you put the effort into it, and and you you, you can do it. It takes a lot more muscles. A lot more people to execute it, but it's it's good. You're at the Lux Hotel. Yes, on on Sunset. On Sunset, Sunset yeah. and the name of uh, why'd you name it on Sunset? Just to make sure that they knew that the Lux was on Sunset. Well, it's kind of it's kind of good to have the name uh, as well as the location because people could say, "Oh, I'm going on Sunset." So on Sunset. and you don't have to ask where. On <laughs> you know exactly where you're going. Did you do you have <laughs> the same kind of situation there that you had at the yeah, resort? Pretty much, pretty much, yeah. We do different things. We have different menus, whether it's the restaurant or or the bar or the banquets. It's 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 all different uh, types of menu, but it, it's good because you have a lot of things going on. You can you can come for dinner if you feel like having a casual dinner. Uh, you you go to the restaurant if you just feel like uh, like watching a game and having some interesting uh, bar food and uh, and appetizer and wine. We we have now we do uh, wine classes on Tuesday night. Oh, you do wine classes? Yes, That's yes. great. We we just open bottles every Tuesday so night. I met your sommelier. Oh, you did? Yeah, David, day. yeah. David, yeah. David Rosansky, very... Does he teach that? Yeah, he does, he does. But um, you have a lot of people working under you then as yeah. executive chef, because as you said, room service, and oh, you, we forget about all those yeah, things yeah, in yeah, a hotel. Course, yeah. A is lot it of good people. for you or not? It is. It's good. <laughs> very good. <laughs> <laughs> you brought some stuff. Yes, I, I mean, did. I'm going to hold this here yes. and let you tell me what you're putting on my plate as you do it. All right. Okay? That, that's good. So th today we, we made, uh, uh, it's called a ceviche. It's type of a ceviche, but it's called, uh, it's called escabeche. Escabeche. Or it's, uh, you find it all over the, the Mediterranean. It's got different recipes, whether it's Italy, Spain, or France, or Greece. It's basically the, the action of uh, marinating some, uh. some fresh Mediterranean fish with, uh, with uh, acid uh, so and olive what, oil. So vinegar? Yeah, well, we, we did citrus with this you one. Did we did oh, lime juice and orange juice and uh, and shallots, and so it's a it's a way to um, it's a different way of cooking fish. Good. How long do you have to marinate it? Uh, c it could go. It depends on the size of the fish. This fish is pretty flat. Let's see this fish. Put this here. Yeah. How long w did you have to marinate this? Um, this one has been marinating for uh, uh, three hours. Oh, that's it's not a, it's very a long. flat. No, not very long, but oh, you because have it's it flat, there. it goes. Oh, I it see. goes. Yeah. You, oh, let me show the. Re this is the fish how it started. Yes, exactly. This is so. It's just a piece of. Yeah, it's a flat fish uh, called dorad from the Mediterranean. Oh, I see. Very, and what's very this nice. Onion. It's the shallot. So oh, we you, you basically chop the shallot. Uh, and uh, you mar marinate it oh, with some I very see. good olive oil and some citrus juice. Oh, and here you have and it. And here oh, you I are. See. So let me let me put it on your plate for you. Let's put a a few leaves, maybe a few mixed greens here. Do you find yeah. the herbs here different than anywhere else? They're very good. I have to say, the produce in uh, Southern California is uh, is it a it's a dream to work with. Inspiration for it you. It is. It is. 
So a couple of endives for color okay. maybe, and a little bit of a uh, little bit of greens. Okay. And then we'll put the the fish right on it. Here you go. Look. And tell us what's on top of this. So it's the shallots. The shallots cooked. Uh, uh, oh, cooked did a you little cook bit. It? Yeah, we cooked it with olive oil, and then we uh, we mm, garlic. Uh, then we had some garlic. We had some uh, lime juice and orange juice, and it, it basic and uh, um, cilantro, a little bit of cilantro, and basically it all marinates together and and makes the fish really tasty. And you can have that as a salad. You you usually have it room temperature. You can have it as a salad, or you can serve it as a as a hors d'oeuvre, or or. But it's a very good. Uh, it's very good for in summer. It's very healthy because it's just olive oil, and uh, the flavors and the colors together. It just makes it look uh, uh, very vibrant. What you would know? you serve as an entree then with this? If we're having oh. this as the beginning. Well, let's see. Uh, if you want to stay in the same, uh, you could do an, another Mediterranean dish, or you could do maybe a, maybe a lamb. You talked about lamb. I yeah. think you do a lot of lamb. We do, which we do, is yeah. great. And and what kinds? We do a rack of lamb. Uh, we do nice marinated. Uh, we do a, we, we put it with a caponata, which is a oh yeah, a what is that? It's a little mix of uh, vegetable from uh, from Sicily, uh, pine nuts, and uh, it's a little sweet, oh. sweet and sour. It, Works very well with the lamb. Um, we do basically are the, the 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 influences of the of the the food are primarily uh, Mediterranean and and uh, Californian, and so it's a lot healthier than uh, than what traditional French cooking w would be. You know, you people actually, think French cooking yeah, it's a lot like of heavy, heavy sauces right. and things, but we we, we we do it. We adapted our recipe to. Uh, to the to California <laughs> palate, yeah. <laughs> do you actually go out and buy the herbs and the things? We do, I do. I go you through the, the farmer's market in Santa Monica. You do? Once a week, and uh, it's beautiful. There's some beautiful produce there, and, you know, people are very nice. And Well, great. you were very nice. Thank, <laughs> Thank you for you. coming. <laughs> that was so great. Yeah. Thank you. And thanks for watching this part of the Joan Quinn Profiles. Please email me at jaquinn.com one at AOL.com and keep writing to 777 South Figueroa, 44th floor, Los Angeles, 90017. We'll see you next time.